yeah, welcome to numerical methods. Another nice example of a Monte Carlo simulation of a stochastic process is that of a Poisson process. And I like to show this to you because it is so different. Yeah? It's different from what you do for the time discrete E2 stochastic process. So first, what is a Poisson process? So we have a parameter lambda here, that lambda be larger than zero. And then a Poisson process with intensity lambda is defined. Yeah, a stochastic process is a family of random variables parameterized with a time parameter. So I have n of t is a random variable. And this random variable is the sum of the indicator functions ti is less or equal the given t, sum i from 1 to infinity, where the ti's are actually times that are generated with an exponential distribution. So the time steps from ti minus 1 to ti, these are iid random variables with exponential distribution with intensity lambda. So recall the exponential distribution. Yeah, we had this in the previous session. Yeah, so this is the distribution function. Has a very nice interpretation. Yeah. From the distribution function, we can do the inversion method to generate an exponential distributed random variable out of a uniform. So I know how to generate the exponential distributed toy. Nice interpretation was, okay, it is the random time, which we get just from this assumption that the trigger is memoryless. Yeah? So the occurrence of this time just depends on the time interval and not what has happened before. That's also now relevant here for this uh, interpretation. And the parameter lambda had a nice interpretation. Okay, so it was an e to the minus lambda t that you observe in the distribution function. Yeah. So if t has the unit time, the lambda has to have the unit one divided by time. So lambda was a frequency. So that means one divided by lambda was a time again. And actually one divided by lambda is the expected time where this uh, random time occurs. Yeah? So we had the result that expectation of tau, where tau has exponential distribution, is 1 divided by lambda. So now going back to the Poisson process, we don't have a random time. We have a random time step. So that means after we have observed the event, the game continues and the event will happen again and we count how many observations of these events have occurred. Yeah? So these intervals here are exponentially distributed time times and then we have a jump yeah, and we just count the number of events here. There's also an inhomogeneous version like there was an inhomogeneous exponential distribution. So you have a lambda that depends on time. So for that, I just define now capital lambda of t is the integral of lambda of s ds. And the inhomogeneous is like in the exponential distribution generated by taking a Poisson process with intensity one. So y is a Poisson process with intensity one and apply the capital lambda as a time change. Yeah? So you can interpret here this capital lambda as a time change. This means if you differentiate this capital lambda with respect to t, yeah, which gives you just the lambda of t, this is a velocity. So the velocity of the time change, so how you yeah, um, compress uh, or expand uh, the time. Okay, so how do you generate now this stochastic process? 
So if you go back to this picture, you see that it's really different from what we did for the Eto stochastic process. For the Eto stochastic process, we somehow prescribed random a, a time discretization and we generated the stochastic process at discrete times. Yeah? So for example, if this here is your discrete time, this stochastic process will, will reside here at two yeah, because it has jumped two times. And this is at one, two, three, four, at four yeah, because it has jumped at four times. So you you could say I just prescribe here a given time, and then you have you know say this here is my t star, yeah, and then you have n at t star on omega two. This is a two, and n at t star of omega one. This is a four. Yeah, but discretizing time is maybe not what we should do here. Yeah, Actually, we would like to see when does the process jump. So what we sample are here these random time steps. Yeah, And then we just check, yeah, have we crossed T star or, or not? So... What we do is that we give us a time horizon up to which we would like to generate the stochastic process. So for a given time horizon, capital T, yeah, we sample now the jump times, Ti, that we require to calculate our stochastic process N yeah, on that interval. If you go back to this picture and your T star is your time horizon, you see that for the blue one, you actually need to sample three jumps. Yeah, The first jump, the second jump, and then after having sampled the th third jump, so three time steps, you know that you are beyond your time horizon. For the red one, for omega one, you need to sample five time steps. Yeah five random time steps, five random time increments, yeah? so five jump, jump times, because it jumps first here, then here, then here, then here, and after you have sampled the fifth one, you know you are beyond your time horizon. So if this here is your time horizon, you see that the number of samples you need on every sample path omega. So reconsider the thing with the Eto stochastic process. Outer loop, sample path, inner loop, times. So now the number of time steps yeah, is random. So you draw n j random numbers. Yeah? So maybe these are now your exponentially distributed random numbers that give you the time steps. No? So actually to, to know that we are beyond, we have to sample nj plus one random numbers. Yeah? So from t0 to t1 yeah, and so on. Yeah? Um, until we observe that the jump time tk plus one is for the first time beyond uh, the time horizon, yeah, where k is now equal to my nj. Note the interesting thing that this nj here, this depends on my omega. Yeah? So the j yeah, is related to the omega j. So this nj is an n of omega j. Yeah? So how many how many times that we need. So exercise, implement an algorithm that takes given time horizon and that samples now a list of sample paths. Well, this is the outer list where this list contains the jump times. So this is the inner list. Yeah? So for every omega, yeah, I have a list of jump times tk of uh, omega. 
So I have a code that does this. Let's have a look at that code. That solves this exercise. And it's here, Poisson process experiment. Okay, so we initialize our uniform random number generator. I create a list that takes the results. Yeah, so this is now a list of lists. So the outer lists are the sample pass omega, and then the inner lists are the jump times that we ob observe. I loop over all sample paths, and then I have to collect the jump times. No? So I create a list. Now this is a list of floating point numbers, yeah, which will collect the jump times. So this list yeah, will be added in the end to the list of lists. So how do we generate the jump times? We initialize the time to zero. We check is the jump time below my time horizon. This here is my time horizon. If yes, then sample a uniform random number. Convert that uniform to an exponentially distributed random number. This exponentially distributed random number is my random time step. This then defines the next time. Yeah, so add it to the time. And then I check if I'm before my time horizon, I put this time into the list and I just uh, continue with the loop. Okay, so you can set maybe a breakpoint here and uh, debug this yeah, and see uh, what's happening. So these are just the first times that we have now collected. So jump times is now 0 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah, so you see it is increasing. So what is our maturity? Okay, this is 10. So if you step over and go to the next sample pass, you see I sample the uniform, I sample the time step. Let's have a look at the variables here. Yeah. You add this time step to, to the time. Yeah. Okay, so you go through all the these times here and create the random times. Yeah, and you see that sometimes. It takes a little bit longer, it goes slower, yeah. Sometimes it goes faster, it jumps from three to six. And the number of times that you sample, this varies a little bit. So here the first one had 12 elements from zero to 11, and the second one has nine elements from zero to, to eight, yeah. So the number of sample times that varies. Okay, so that would be up to here how you would generate these. Uh, let me comment this here out for a second, and then I create a small plot that you see this. Okay, I have a plot that now plots these guys, and you see now this is the picture yeah, that we jump up uh, and we count here the jumps. Okay, so to conclude, um, we have the funny thing that the number of uniform samples that we need to complete the sampling of the sample pass, this varies. So now if you go back to your other example with the ETO stochastic process, I told you if you would like to know what is the dimension yeah, of the E2 integral that you integrate, just look at how much uniforms you use to generate one of these samples. So here actually we see it very nicely. We loop over all time steps and we generate one uniform for each time step for the ETO stochastic process. Or if you look at this version, yeah, you see that you generate a vector of uniforms that is then transformed by using one element of that vector for every time step. If you look at this code here, yeah, it's random how many time steps we need to arrive at the time horizon capital T. 
So if you would ask yourself, okay, what is the dimension of the Monte Carlo integral? Actually, you could not answer it by this because the size of this set here This depends on the on omega. The number of the jump times that occur depends here on the sample pass. So what is then the dimension of the Monte Carlo integral? Well, it's, it's random. It's infinite dimensional. I don't know. You see again that actually Monte Carlo doesn't care about the dimension because that's exactly what we also had here yeah we generate an n-dimensional vector out of taking n samples from a one-dimensional sequence yeah and uh, for the monte carlo method uh, taking more samples or taking a higher dimension yeah, is just the same Okay, this maybe also shows a little bit how the Monte Carlo method scales linear in, in the dimension. There is a important modification to the Poisson process, maybe that of a compensated one. So if you look at the Poisson process N and you subtract lambda of T, then this process is a martingale. So it has um, expectation being the starting value. Yeah? Uh, it has the martingale property. Uh, yeah, how do you see this? Yeah? So your process jumps up. So it is drifting up. And what is the expected slope of this drift? So claim is that this slope of this drift is lambda. A little bit sloppy, you see this as follows. What do you do? We sum the time steps, which are exponentially distributed. Yeah? So we sum these from zero, okay, to n, so if you have n jumps, yeah, and we would like to arrive at time capital T. So this is a little bit sloppy because you do not arrive exactly at capital T. Yeah, it's a bit, a little bit random. Sometimes we are before, sometimes we are after. Okay, but maybe just consider this. Um, these are exponentially distributed. So we know that the exponent expectation of this time step, this expectation is, yeah, go back to the exponential distributed random variable, is one divided by lambda. I'm summing in average, if you take expectation on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, okay, so you sum one divided by lambda, okay, that's, and we sum it n times. So from that I get n times one divided by lambda is little t. So from that I get that in expectation n of t is lambda times t. So you see that your process is drifting with um, a lambda times t. Yeah? And if we subtract this, then we have a martingale. Yeah, maybe just uh, have a look at this. So what I'm doing here is now, if I arrive here, I have my list of lists. So let's run it again with the debugger. Complete the loop. Yeah. So you see you have now your list of lists here with all the different random times. Okay. Then I loop over all sample paths. And for each sample pass, I take my random times. From this, I generate here a stream and I filter out all the times that are below a given time and I count them. So this is just the function n of given time here. Yeah? So this 
function maps time to count the number of times that are less or equal that given given time. So this is my n of t, my count, and from that I subtract lambda times time, and then I would like to plot this this function. Yeah. So here I just have a small code that plots this. So if you run this, you will now generate the compensated process. So he is plotting a, the same process as before, but now with a minus lambda t. Yeah, and you see that this is looks like a martingale. You find this Poisson process experiment here yeah, in our lecture repository. And now let me conclude with the remark that you see that for our ito stochastic process, we could also use the Horton sequence because we knew we had five time steps. So I need a five dimensional low discrepancy sequence. If you go back to the Poisson process, that's maybe not so easy. Yeah? So of course you could set up a sufficiently high dimensional low discrepancy sequence and then just cut off some sample paths where you need more times. Yeah? So that would be a solution, but it's maybe not so clear how you would do this algorithm with a low discre discrepancy sequence. So that is a remark, yeah, we already did this. When you consider low discrepancy sequences, you have to be careful to use the right dimension, yeah. We are required to use an n-dimensional sequence or an n-dimensional integral. And for the Poisson process, yeah, this is maybe a bit uh, subtle. It's not so clear what to do. Yeah, that was a small tour linking Monte Carlo simulation to time discrete stochastic process. And the next session is on time discretization of stochastic processes. That was it.